We are at the historic Howard University. And we're here to explore how, how best to empower the next generation of leaders on the continent of Africa, in the United States, and throughout the diaspora. Now, it's not an exaggeration to say that the future of the African continent is in the hands of her young people. And now let me get very personal and say this to my young African American sisters and brothers, you are the only future that I have. And so given how deeply connected Africa and her people are to those of us in the diaspora who have enough sense to know who we are and whose we are, it is safe to say that the destiny of black folks is in the hands of young people. Brother President Melfort certainly appreciates that reality, and it was no doubt at the heart of why he presented to President Barack Obama the very creation of YALI, Young African Leaders Initiative. For Brother President Melford's proposal of that initiative and for countless ways that he has been a mighty force at the helm of the constituency for Africa for the past 25 years, Brother President, we are truly grateful. Now, as you all know, Nearly a quarter of the world's 7.3 billion people are now in the age bracket of between 10 and 24 years old, with almost 90% of these young'uns, as I love to respectfully call young people, nearly or almost 90% of these young'uns live in what some folks say is the least developed countries. Africa, that continent from which we all descended, that place that is the cradle of humanity, has more people under the age of 20 than anywhere else in the world. Today, the median age in Sub-Saharan Africa is under 19. As I've indicated, Africa is a continent that belongs to each and every one of us. It is indeed the cradle of all of humanity. And today, when we look at that extraordinary place called Africa, we see that it is a place so filled with young people and the promise that young people bring. Africa has more people under the age of 20 than anywhere else in the world. Today, the median age in Sub-Saharan Africa is under 19. Indeed, half of the populations of Chad, Niger, and Uganda are 
under 16 years of age. Now, my sisters and brothers, there is a paradox that must be understood and dealt with. On the one hand, Africa's young people often suffer from poverty, joblessness, preventable diseases, poor access to health care, and poor access to primary education. In many African countries, there is the daunting problem of child marriage and a lack of educational opportunities for girls and for women. However, there is overwhelming evidence that if the current leaders in African nations would invest in their young people, the results would be startlingly positive. I can say the same thing about my own nation. So, on the one hand, Africa's young people, if left alone, can become a tremendous drag on economic, social, and political life on the continent. But if Africa's young people are viewed as they should be, if they are viewed as who they are, the future of the continent, and if their challenges are addressed, they are then the source of enormous change. And these young African people are the wind behind a powerful movement forward. On the other hand, Africa's young people, like young people in the diaspora and around the world, tend to have characteristics that set them up to be leaders in the sense of change agents. Young people are often incredibly optimistic. They believe that almost anything is possible, and sometimes they believe that indeed they really can fly. I want to tell you that during those 10 years, when I had the privilege and the joy of serving as the president of Spelman College, I had a fear that I would return to campus and up on the top of the administration building called Rockefeller Hall, I would look up and see all of my Spelman sisters, these young African-American women going like this because they had come to believe that they really could fly. Another characteristic of young people in Africa, the diaspora, and the world is that it is good, they feel, to experiment, to try something new, to not be afraid of walking a path that has never been walked before. I can share with you that on each of the occasions when I've had really the honor and the joy of meeting with a Yali group, I have been struck by how many of these young African leaders are entrepreneurs. My sisters and my brothers all, of all the challenges facing us as black folks on the continent, in the United States, throughout the diaspora, one that I lift up here and ask, no, I beg that we do better at addressing is this. We spend too much time 
speaking of differences between people, including young people, on the continent and our people in the Caribbean, South and North America, throughout the diaspora. There's clearly more that should and does bind us together than separates us. The day our young people on the continent, throughout the diaspora, come together, look out world. As a new administration comes into office, and we all better work and pray and get out the vote so that the right person leads that new administration into Washington. We need to lobby. We need to work for a continuation of the Young African Leaders Initiative. But I think importantly, we need to call for greater effort to connect African young people in Yali with young diaspora and in particular African Americans in the United States. I want to bring closure now by sharing with you the words of Nina Simone. Nina Simone wrote and sang in tribute to Lorraine Hansberry, a song that I'm sure many of you know, but it's such a wonderful way, I think, to open this particular part of our Ron Brown conference. Listen to these words and imagine Nina Simone's melodic and deep voice. To be young, gifted, and black. Oh, what a lovely, precious dream. To be young, gifted, and black. Open your heart to what I mean. In the whole world, you know, there are billions of boys and girls who are young, gifted, and black, and that's a fact. <laughs> young, gifted, and black. We must begin to tell our young, there's a world waiting for you. This is a guess. That's just, this is a quest that's just begun. When you feel really low, yeah, there's a great truth you should know. When you're young, gifted, and black, your soul's intact. Young, gifted, and black, how I long to know the truth. There are times when I look back and I am haunted by my youth. Oh, but my joy of today is that we can all be proud to say to be young, gifted, and black is where it's at. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for that very inspiring welcome and beginning. We are going to continue on with our second special guest. Uh, special remarks from the U.S. perspective. Today we have with us Mr. Christopher Runyon. He is the Acting Deputy Assistant Secretary for the Africa Bureau at U U.S. Aid, U.S. Agency for International Development. And he's going to share uh, his perspective and the agency and the U United States perspective on what it means to empower uh, Africa's youth leaders. Mr. Onion, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is the second time I've had to do this, and following Janetta is like watching a car accident in slow motion. 
So you're about to watch it again. <laughs> Thank you for the inspiring remarks and thanks for your passion uh, for this issue and for this topic, um, both in the United States and in Africa. Um, so I'm, I'm pleased to be here representing USAID. Um, I also am joined by a staff member here, Sarah Neely, who is also on our YALI team and works on it full time and may be able to also answer questions if people have them uh, afterwards. Um, so Dr. Cole mentioned several statistics. I'll just hit you with a couple more um, that are complimentary. So one is uh, that 70% of Sub-Saharan Africa is under the age of 30. So regardless of which definition of youth you use, and there are several out there, there's a marketplace for defining youth. Um, one thing I'm sure of is that I am no longer in any of their definitions. Uh, but usually 35 and under, or in some cases 25 and under. Uh, and then usually in some cases it is over a sort of minimum range, uh, sometimes around 16 or 18. Um, 43% of the population is under 15 years of age. So the United uh, Nations estimates that by 2055, Africa's population of 15 to 24 year olds will more than double from the current as part of the worldwide youth bulge. And I'll talk about bulge in a second. But keeping pace with that, specifically for Sub-Saharan Africa, means the creation of over 500 million jobs. So as we talk about building young African leaders, as we talk about our development relationship with Africa, our diplomatic relationship with Africa, uh, we need to keep mind of the fact that demographics and other factors are going to demand um, that Africa fundamentally improve a lot of its economic potential a lot of its social indicators and other things like that. And certainly the United States, and in particular my agency, seeks as much as possible to be extremely supportive of those goals. So on youth development, uh, youth leadership development, as well as on workforce development, we're very engaged. Uh, YALI is a cornerstone example of that type of engagement as one that USAID hopes to build upon in the future. I'll be frank with you. Um, Presidential initiatives sometimes are not brilliantly received by everyone in the bureaucracy. Uh, sometimes people perceive them as being political, short term, uh, done for publicity purposes or other things like that. That is not at all the way President Obama saw this and I was working with him at the White House when much of this was formulated. Uh, and he wanted this to be something that we would keep going. And I will talk about that briefly as well. I think uh, I'm proud to say that with a lot of the hard work that's been done on YALI, we have won over hundreds and thousands of allies. Whether that's in the private sector, whether that's in the US government itself, in different agencies and departments, whether that's with civil society groups, non-governmental uh, groups outside of the US government, and increasingly, and I'm particularly proud of this, is partnerships with uh, African governments. Um, as many folks know, uh, Yali was really born from the president. Uh, he, he really wanted the United States to double down on engaging young people in Africa, and he wanted to do it in a way that was really a direct connection between the United States and those people. Um, uh, alongside that and over time, we've built stronger and stronger partnerships with many of the African governments that are very supportive and share our objectives on YALI. Uh, and so I think that as YALI changes over time, um, it's going to evolve, uh, and it is evolving into something quite beautiful uh, and, and uh, very, very inclusive of a lot of different voices. Um, Folks may or may not know, but just very quick, quickly, there are three sort of main components of this initiative. One is the Mandela Washington Fellows, and we've got a live living example from Mozambique of one of those today, Jacqueline, who you'll hear from later. Another is the YALI Network, which is a even larger network at this point. How many hundreds of thousands at this point? 250,000 young leaders who are connected and uh, able to uh, collaborate on initiatives and efforts. And then uh, also, uh, very excitingly, my agency led the charge to take YALI to Africa. So as many folks know, uh, the Mandela Washington Fellowship Program really brings 
uh, young leaders here to the United States. It's fabulous, great exposure. We partner with universities across the country. Um, but we also wanted to take Yali to Africa. And the creation of bricks and mortar training facilities in uh, uh, three locations in Africa uh, is really quite an exciting opportunity for us to take this to the next level and to build a completely different set of engagement and opportunities. Um, this spirit is why we, why President Obama launched YALI in 2010 to support young Africans as they themselves employ, mentor, and support other youth, spurring growth and prosperity, democratic governance, and enhancing peace and security across Africa. In addition to providing training and professional development op opportunities, YALI has been a platform for driving the positive youth development narrative and bringing people to the table from many angles. First, YALI has fostered opportunities for youth to connect and learn from each other. And I really, I cannot underemphasize this. We thought it was pretty exciting and fun to have large groups of young African leaders here in the United States and then to be able to tr create training centers uh, in Africa. But the, the, the explosive nature of putting a lot of young African leaders together from a variety of different countries and seeing how they immediately connect with each other, find common ground, start networking, share their networks, find joint projects and initiatives and efforts, advocacy work, companies, things like that. Uh, there are some marvelous stories from our experiences where, for example, uh, simply because two young African uh, uh, Mandela Washington fellows were roommates, there are now joint ventures between Cap Verde and Lesotho. I mean, these things just happen organically when these raw materials are together, and we're very, very excited that we have the ability to help facilitate that. Uh, let's just make sure we're all intellectually honest here, too. We're not driving all of that. That's them. We're just facilitating and creating the venues where they get together. But we know that the chemistry and the raw material is there to do some extraordinary uh, profound things in Africa. And, and it is very clear to me uh, uh, that uh, many of these young people are impatient. Uh, they wanna see change. They wanna see it now. Uh, they uh, are not going to take no for an answer. Uh, they are willing to take enormous risks, personal, economic, family, et cetera, in order to create and generate change, whether that's in governance, whether that's in corruption, whether that's for HIV AIDS, whether that's for other types of social change or security, uh, um, and things like that. Uh, second I would point out is YALI has acted as a platform to build broad partnerships to support young Africans. We've brought together diverse organizations and individuals from private sector, civil society, and the public sector. Our partners are enthusiastic supporters of YALI and see the great potential in advancing youth leadership opportunities in Africa and promoting growth uh, to strengthen African-based business and entrepreneurship, civil society, and public administration. And I should say, uh, folks who have worked with uh, the U.S. government before or traditional development projects are pretty familiar with the way the business model works. Usually, we're very specific. A procurement or a contract or other things like that, they're very, very specific. In this case, we said, YALI is open to any field. It doesn't matter if you're in performing arts and you're a dancer. It doesn't matter if you're a community organizer. It doesn't matter if you're uh, a, a peace and security conflict expert or other things like that. So we have people from across all of these different disciplines. And that's very exciting and actually quite unusual for a lot of development programs. International private sector partners like Microsoft, MasterCard Foundation, Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble, as well as uh, uh, African companies, which is extremely exciting, African companies uh, like Econet Wireless, then the Kenya Commercial Bank and others, have come to join us and make contributions so that we can keep this program going. We've also partnered with African higher education institutions uh, to host our YALI Regional Leadership Centers. Those are based in South Africa, in Kenya, in Ghana, and in Senegal. Uh, and we're also creating some spoke locations that help to support the program uh, in Maputo, in Mozambique, as well as um, uh, in Nigeria. 
for, uh, for one example I'll just point out also in how we're connecting with U.S. universities because I know a lot of people here are, are, are working on diaspora issues or of African descent following things or from the university relationships. Uh, there are some opportunities that I do want to point out, but one of the relationships that, that we also have tried to create are connections between African higher education institutions and American higher education institutions. And there's well over a dozen U.S. universities that are partnering with us on our effort to take YALI to Africa and really create a sustainable, direct connection between African higher ed education institutions and American ones. Um, another good example, uh, because of the setting that we're in today, and one fitting to discuss here, is the collaboration that's taken place between the Yali Center in Ghana and Howard University. So we're particularly proud of that. Howard not only hosts Mandela Washington Fellows here for training in public administration, in public management, but also uh, Howard has uh, leaned forward to try to engage with the Yali activities that are taking place in Africa. So all this together, uh, it makes YALI a unique program. Uh, we're bringing together youth for a new type of learning experience, one that emphasizes diversity, one that emphasizes tackling challenges together, one that connects young people to the private sector, to the civil society, to public organizations, to understand real world issues and real world leadership skill uh, needs across Sub-Saharan Africa. And it's a critical moment to engage and to invest in young people, consistent, I should say, with USAID's policy on youth, uh, which people are welcome to download off of USAID's website, but we have a youth strategy that drives the US government's foreign assistance, and it is much more inclusive, and it actually requires building in youth perspectives from many of our programs, and I think YALI has, uh, YALI punches above its weight, because in many ways we've now got thousands of alumni who have gone through YALI programs and we're able to reach out to them to help inform our programs. And that means that we're getting voices that are not the usual suspects. We're getting young people themselves who are telling us, try this, try that. I have some connections here. Let me help you with social media. Let me pull in other friends. Here are these testimonials from people. And at least for a development or an agency like my own, that's uh, pure gold. And sometimes those networks can be hard to find. So for American taxpayers, you should be happy that we're using your resources wisely. The impact of investing in young leaders can't be underestimated. We should consider youth not just as beneficiaries of our programs, but as partners in reaching out uh, for our development objectives across the continent. And on that note, I would just like to say thanks again to the organizers. Uh, if folks have questions, we're always open to, to receive those and help follow up. If you have partnership ideas, or thoughts. We're always interested in receiving feedback as well as new ideas. Uh, many of the great things that I think we've been able to do over the last few years uh, under this administration have been based on things that we didn't think of, but they were ideas that came to us. And we were able to create partnerships and leverage other partners to be able to make those things happen. So with that, thank you very much. Well, thank you for that. I, I just want to reiterate the U.S. perspective that we've shared. It's also really about public and private partnerships. Okay? So with public and private partnerships, that's special language for institutions working with the people. And I've had the chance to work with USAID and with YALI. I think a few of us have met quite a few YALI leaders, and it's phenomenal. So our hope is that we see YALI continue and that we also see innovative ways of how to partner with Africans and Africa as a whole. Um, so moving forward, we're now gonna hear a bit from the, U, uh, from the African perspective on what it means to empower Africa's youth leaders. Uh, I want to introduce Mr. Abraham Okoko Esau, the Executive Director of Foundation Perspectives d'Avenir. Please join me in welcoming him. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Allow me first to heartily thank the constituency for Africa for inviting our organization, the Foundation Perpetu d'Avenir, to share on its experience in empowering the Congo's tomorrow young leaders, 
in this 2016 Ronald H. Brown African Affairs Series. Our foundation is really delighted to be part of this year event as it gives an opportunity to interact with other actors interested in the fate of Africa and to contribute in the setting of the US Africa agenda for the next American administration. It is always good to be where the future is prepared and where history is written. Foundation Perspective d'Avenir is a civil organization established in 2012 in the Congo. Created by Mr. Denis Christel Sasungesso to promote and support education, professional and vocational training, well-being, personal development, as well as entrepreneurship initiative of young Congolese from poor families and disadvantaged groups. It aims at providing the Congo with the leaders, managers, and technicians it might need for its economic emergence and sustainable development. It tries to foster their inclusion and participation in the building up of a better future for the Congo. It promotes the vision of qualified youth in the service of an emergent Congo and bases its actions on values such as excellence, transparency, equity, and general interest. It has a governance structure and relies mainly on private donations from individuals and private sectors as well as resources collected through charity mechanisms. Our institution is still young. We are a young organization. And we know that no ambition can be fully achieved in a short time. My contribution this afternoon will focus on the way our foundation empowers tomorrow Congolese leaders. First of all, what is our understanding of leadership? And what type of leaders do we want to nurture, prepare, or empower? For us, a leader is a person who can mobilize and lead others toward transformational change within a society. We want visionary, transformative, innovative, exemplary, and serving leaders. For us, leadership is not, first of all, a position. But it might be a position. It's sometimes a position. But it's not, first of all, a position. It's the way you use your position to build up the community. How young Congolese are prepared to become global and serving leaders. As far as empowering young Congolese to become leaders tomorrow is concerned, the foundation has initiated or set up a few programs. I can say our program for leadership is a multi-component program. The first component of the program is a scholarship program. Within that program, you have three types of scholarship. One scholarship program for excellence. The other one is mainly based on uh, social criteria. And the third one is mainly the type of scholarship that we can uh, get in negotiating, in partnering 
with other universities. Uh, the program started last year, and last year we sent 20 young Congolese in universities in Morocco and Senegal. This year, we are going to send more than 70 in Senegal, Morocco, Tunisia, and Mauritius. I think there is also Burkina Faso. I think Burkina Faso this year. This is a way to support young people coming from poor family to get higher education and to contribute also in the building up of our community society. The second program is a program of uh, entrepreneurship. What we have noticed in our country, because most of this program has been developed based on the context. You know, since independence, the state was the only provider, of, the main provider of jobs in the country. And you know that almost everywhere, the state is no longer recruiting, a very little, at least in public administration, because public administration is, main, is more and more downsized. But at the same time, we face the challenge of having a private sector who is still weak. So the private sector is not in a position to absorb all the qualified young people who come from learning institutions. And we have also a problem. Sometimes the young people who come from universities or learning institutions are not attractive to private sectors just because they come out of this university without qualification. They can have diplomas, but without qualification. Because the training in the university doesn't match the needs of the private sector. And we have decided to develop this program, entrepreneurship program to help young people to start their own business, to create their job, and to be able to hire other young people. That's the way we can tackle also this issue of unemployment in Africa. Because un unemployment is a social bomb in Africa. If we don't pay attention, it can destabilize some of our country. The third program is what we call vacational program. During holidays, this program started last year, we bring five, child, five young boy, pupils from each department of the country. We bring them together so that they can share about the experience and learn to live together develop project together. Because we have one problem in our countries. We know that the issue of uh, ethnicity. And young people, the children, they learn it sometimes in the family or in the street. But when you bring them together, they start learning about the food, the culture of their neighbors. And now they start perceiving others differently. And for us also, we believe that this program is very important because to build leaders, you need to start very early. You don't need to wait, wait only when they are at the university level. The fourth program in this leadership program is what we call the Academy of Leadership and Employment. It is mainly the need for transformative action or change, as well as the challenge of soft skills development for employment, which led us to set up this special program. We have noticed that sometimes those who need work, those who create jobs, they need 
young people with transversal and soft or meta skills. But the university, our learning institution, doesn't communicate, transmit these skills. That's why we have developed that program. So young people, they learn how to, to manage a meeting, how to be in a plenary session, how to, uh, sorry? How to write a CV, how to, um, uh, how to, uh, to manage conflict. All these skills which can, will be necessary for them to lead a community or to lead a group. The last program that what impl we are implementing now is what we call the School of Wisdom. We have a think tank. You know, a think tank usually is a space where people discuss and try to come out with maybe some ideas for new public policy. Yes, the think tank functions in that way. As long as in that think tank we invite pe experienced people, we want, we want this, this, this space to be also a framework where these young people can learn. You know, in Africa, you become wise when you learn from elders. You sit close to the elders. You listen. You see the way they behave. You listen from their word. You listen from their practice. You learn from their practice. So this is also one of the, complement, the components where to build, uh, I mean, the leaders. Now, we have, we have envisioned a sixth component that we have not yet developed, that we would like to develop. That's what we call international and professional exposure. So we would like now to bridge our leadership program with other existing programs, such as YALI program and the African Union, a youth program. In that way, we'll be able not only to prepare leaders for Congo, but also for Africa and for the world. We want to empower global leaders. That's why we think that what is at stake in this leadership program is not only the future of Congo, but is also the future of Africa and of the world. We are facing challenges. We know that we need more resources to sustain this program. We need to be better organized ourselves to perform in this program. And then we need also to see how, for instance, those we go who benefit from the scholarship program can themselves benefit from this leadership program also, the, the all, uh, all other components. But we believe, and this will be our recommendation also for the next admi admi American administration, to maintain the YALI program, but to expand this program in a way that it can interact with other leadership program in Africa. We want to build an alliance around uh, providing leaders for tomorrow. We know that without leader, our world cannot be in a better shape. We need to prepare the future in preparing the leaders for tomorrow. We are sharing our experience here because we want to mobilize other actors to build a wide alliance to prepare leadership for tomorrow. Tomorrow will be better with a better leadership. And this will be, should be our common task. And this will be also for the future, our common legacy. 
And in sharing this experience, I would like to mobilize here what I can call companion of vision and of passion in building leadership for tomorrow. So this vision, whatever people can say, comes from one person, the founder of the, of the foundation. You cannot have such a vision if you are not yourself a leader. I close there. Thank you. Thank you.